Yo, what's going on Comfy Gang? It's your boy Comfy Neat. Uh, so today's topic has been something that's been on my mind for a while. And um, where it really started from, I guess, with this idea in my head, was uh, when I was talking to my one of my cousins about, um, you know, my social anxiety and just kind of like confessing to her about what I was going through. And, um, you know, I guess explaining my side, not my side, but like, what exactly it's like to have social anxiety and then one thing she said kind of struck me and she said oh so basically for you it's like high school never ended and i really thought about that for a while um and you know i guess it kind of makes sense because for i guess a lot of normies um you know you know high school ends and you get to be this new person in college but uh, and while i do sort of agree with this uh, which is why I'm not going to say high school never ended definitively, but I will make the argument that high school never truly ends because I feel that there are certain, uh, I don't know, s social phenomenon, phenomena, and, you know, different forces, different things at play that kind of persist all the way from high school until the end of your life, basically, you know, maybe less so as you enter um irrelevancy as a you know 60 or 70 year old but you know for the most part these things kind of persist and in a way i'm making the argument that high school is essentially a sort of microcosm of society and that um basically it's a reflection of it's not a reflection like a foreshadowing of what you will be going through for the rest of your life, albeit with a few exceptions, uh, like for example, you know, um, well, I'll get into that later in the video. So um, anyways, yeah, uh, in my opinion, the reason high school never ends is because um, essentially uh, in high school, uh, I guess even middle school, like especially after you, um, you go through puberty and you start to, um, you know, develop and mature as a person you start to you know enter the whole social world and have to start to have to start dealing with the reality of you know social hierarchies and hierarchies everywhere um you know these hierarchies kind of exist even when you're like a toddler or like you know before you hit middle school but they're not really you know that important at the time there's no like popularity contests among you know fifth graders there's no like who can be the cool kid except maybe you know in your own class where you're trying to compare who has the coolest toy or who has the best pokemon or whatever you know yeah whatever but anyways once you um enter you cross that threshold of maturity and start to experience the social world as it is, um, you start to have things like, um, you know, the cool kids versus the non-cool kids, bullies and non-bullies, and all these things. And um, yeah, and what's interesting is that I feel like there are certain things that determine whether you are bullied or not. Uh, for example, um, obviously one, one key factor would be genetics and specifically, you know, your physical characteristics, which are, you know, partially uh, a product of your environment, but also, especially at that age where you, you're still developing and you still haven't, um, your body still hasn't been in subject, like um, subjected to like the growth of puberty and, you know, all that stuff about your face developing normally with like proper tongue posture and everything hasn't come into play yet there are really certain key aspects that um parts of your um physical appearance that will largely determine whether you're bullied and it'll be things like your facial symmetry you know whether your eyes are tilted um are tilted uh you know positively or negatively you know cantal tilt and um also, you know, obviously one key thing is like height, right? Like, and height and size and like weight, 
you know, for that age. Because obviously everybody grows up, I mean, will grow up at different speeds and some people will be a little bit behind as far as like their growth is, but they'll catch up or even be like bigger than everybody else later on in life. That was kind of like me, to be honest, but um, I was, I'm, I'm not huge, but I'm, I'm bigger than a lot of people that I went to school with. But I remember as a kid, I was, uh, you know, I was fairly skinny and skinny fat. No, I was fat and I was short, skinny fat and short. And um, yeah, that's certainly a huge factor where, you know, things like height and size will determine whether you're bullied. And, um, you know, obviously that will persist all the way into your adulthood where, you know, things like your physical appearance will have a huge impact on how you are treated by other people. Um, I mean, obviously high school does end in the sense that, you know, there are ways to overcome this deficit. Like for example, um, let's say if you're short, but you like, you make a lot of money, you you are uh, confident and you know you have a good personality then that can compensate for that to a a decent degree it's not gonna compensate for it completely like for example if you are in a room with someone who has the exact same things exact same traits as you except they're taller than you and maybe they look better then people are naturally going to respect the person who is exactly the same as you in all of the ways except your looks more than you because you're, la you're lacking in that deficit. And um, I guess even to an extent, confidence does play a role in whether you're bullied or not as a kid when you're short uh, and small and weak. But uh, I, I'd say it's to a much lesser degree, especially at, the, at that age where you are not exactly cognizant of these things. You're just some sort of like going with the flow, if that makes sense. And, um, but yeah, these things certainly persist and, um, yeah, it can have a huge impact. And at the same time, t on the subject of bullying, um, I feel that, um, <clears throat> yeah, bullying still does go on. Uh, it's just that when you reach adulthood, um, it's just a lot less, it's a lot less on the surface. It's a way more, uh, covert. It's way more, um, you know, I don't know. It's way more hidden. Um, but it definitely does exist. Like for example, in high school or middle school, people who are bullied there might be just, you know, pushed around, shoved into lockers, um, you know, punched, kicked, um, or, you know, made fun of, um, behind their back, have people, um, you know, whispering and, and making jokes at their expense and things like that. And interesting, while a lot of the more severe stuff, um, you know, goes away, I feel like that's replaced by a lot of the more uh, social thing, like social ways of bullying. So for example, a lot more gossiping will happen, a lot more crap talking and occasionally still you know, physical violence. It's just that that doesn't happen as much because it's, you know, illegal and socially frowned upon for good reason. But I feel like if those sort of social, so, uh, fuck, those sort of social norms weren't in place, then I feel like it would happen just as much as it did at that age. But thankfully that's not the case. And yeah, as far as like uh, things like status goes and hierarchies, social hierarchies, I feel like that also persists past high school. Um, so for instance, let's say, yeah. So basically I'm saying that like the world is essentially one giant popularity contest. And I'm not saying it's like this with all people or in all cultures or in all communities, but um, I feel like it is like that predominantly in a lot of different societies and cultures around the world. I think it is part of some innate aspect of us that needs to, you know, gauge ourselves against other people and compete. And um, yeah, that's certainly, uh, you know, that's certainly 
persists all the way through where you're, uh, you know, you're basically sizing each other up and you're competing for, for resources and all these things and attention and, you know, the right to make <laughs> and um, all these things. And that will, you know, that will largely persist. And um, obviously, at the same time, I feel like to what extent these popularity contests exist are also dependent on the societies in which you're located in. So, and that applies to both during high school and after high school, where, for example, you know, if you're in a more kind society, if that even exists, I feel like they do though, like maybe in some parts in like Northern Europe or something, everybody there seems uh, way nicer, but I don't know anything about these areas, but let's just say they are. Um, I imagine, you know, it's probably a lot better there in high school too, versus somewhere like, or even like Canada, at least from what I've seen, isn't as bad as somewhere like America or, um, I don't know where else, but um, maybe it's just, it's just like a meme in all the movies portraying America as this like, this savage hellscape for teenagers where, you know, the big, the big like jocks just, you know, take a shit on everyone who's smaller than them. But um, yeah, I feel like as far as America goes, that certainly persists all the way until, um, well, you become an old person. And um, yeah, and as far as, um, you know, and I guess how it does change after high school is that, um, well, things like wealth uh, and, you know, again, status start to come more into play. But at this, but if you kind of look at it, or like the under, like um, the sort of like underlying, like whatever structure of things, it's still a huge popularity contest where, you know, you're, instead of, you know, flexing, instead of just re relying purely on like your looks and your size and, you know, I guess what you're good at, like sports or, you know, um, things like that, um, you instead start to compete in terms of like how much money you have, your net worth, the value of your, your the things that you use to cope with and all these things. And you're essentially competing the same for the exact same things that I mentioned before, just with, uh, you know, different, I guess, ways of competing. And uh, another way it doesn't, uh, I guess, high school never truly ends, is that, um, let me think. Uh, so I guess the last reason high school doesn't end has less to do with, um, you know, forces on the outside, but it has more to do with you as an individual. So um, I guess there is the chance that, um, you know, maybe once you went to high school and, you know, let's say you weren't popular, you weren't, you were basically a nobody or you were picked on, you know, there's a chance that you'll happen to fall into this, to a different social, uh, social circle in high school. I mean, in, co in university or college or outside of high school and, you know, You'll find your place in the world. You'll meet um, these great people who will be your friends and bring you up. But I feel like all these portrayals of that happening in like Hollywood are really just essentially marketing for a universe for university. And I feel like for most people, um, you are largely going to be the exact same person you were in high school. You will change, obviously. I've changed since high school, but. In terms of my social abilities, my social anxiety, my all these things about me, my work ethic, um, um, how I dress, how I looked, um, and all these things, um, you know, I've largely, I've largely remained the same, and I feel like it's like that for most people. So, let's say you are predisposed to being a neat because of all the things I just previously mentioned and you've been bullied and you've had all that happen. Well, the chances of you um, getting out of that seem to be fairly thin and it definitely takes way more effort on the individuals who go through these things or 
are predisposed to, you know, need them than, you know, let's say someone who's predisposed to be a normie. I'm not saying it's not possible to change, but you will largely be the exact same person. Your hobbies, everything will be very similar. So anyways, these are several of the reasons, in my opinion, why high school never truly ends. Um, if you agree with what I've said, or you know, you like this video, or you like my haircut, <laughs> uh, make sure to hit the like and subscribe button down below. And um, this is Company Neat, signing out.